So expressions in C actually adhere to the commutative and associative laws of mathematics. So for the precedences and other such various details, we request you to refer to table 2.1 in the textbook. An interesting feature of the C language is that it allows assign and use in the same expression as well as in conditional expressions. So here is a small program to demonstrate the use of expressions. We won't be going very much in details of the various nuances of the expressions. That is what can be had from the textbook. So we have an integer variable i which has been assigned a value of 100. Then we have integer values of variables j, k and l. So j has been assigned the value in a somewhat complicated fashion. On the right hand side, first of all k is assigned a value of i plus 10 because this is in the inner parenthesis. So it happens first. Then the value of this is divided by 2 and assigned back to j. The value of L has been assigned using a conditional expression. And the conditional expression, the syntax is, first of all, there is a condition, then question mark, and the value to be assigned or returned if the expression evaluates to true, colon, the value to be returned if the expression evaluates to false. So L is going to get a value in the end, which is going to depend on the condition, i greater than 10 or not and three printf's after this to basically show as to what all the various expressions evaluated. So the outputs are uh, shown here. Note that the k value of k is i plus 10, that is 100 plus 10 is equal to 110. The reason being that this assignment happened first, there were parentheses and so they took precedence. After that, the value of j is 55 because that is 110 by 2. And then finally, the value of L evaluates to 10 because I was greater than 10. So the conditional expressions form a very important or very much used part of the C language. They are quite popular in having saturating arithmetics. No longer so because of certain instructions which have got introduced in the processors, but at least previously. Also note the use of parentheses to disambiguate between the various operators and the operator precedences. So if we did not have a parenthesis around k is equal to i plus 10, then we are not really sure when the value of k will get assigned, until unless we are very clear on the precedences. And the parenthesis use actually makes it much more readable, because even if you are familiar with the various precedence rules, someone else might not be. So since parentheses have the highest precedence, then anything within parentheses is evaluated first, followed by anything else. So this slide shows the expression evaluation flow inside a processor. So we have taken a very typical expression, a is equal to a plus b. And to a first time programmer, this particular expression evaluation can at times be quite confusing. The reason being that mathematically a can never be equal to a plus b until unless b is equal to 0. Whereas this is a very commonly used expression in programs. So what is really happening here is that the assignment to a happens after the values of a and b have been used. So let's just see an example as to how this is happening. So since we already know that the compiler is going to allocate the variables to the individual registers, so assume that the register allocation has been done as shown. That is, the final value of A is deposited in R1. The original value of A was in a variable R2. And the original value of B was in a variable R3. So what is going to happen in the first step is that the values of A and B will be loaded into R2 and R3 from the memory. After that happens, these values are read by the arithmetic logic unit or the ALU which performs its operation and the values are stored back to R1. Now after the value has been stored back to R1, in the next stage, the value will be deposited from R1 into the memory location of the variable A. So after this entire expression executes, you will have the new value of A plus B in the variable but do note that after the register allocation, these 
variables were actually lying in separate registers. Though that is not really a necessity, but it just makes the understanding of this part more simpler. So another important concept while we are at expressions to understand is that of the expression tree. So this is a compiler internal concept, but once you understand this, you will also be able to appreciate a few things in your code as well as the design style that is being followed. So if the original expression say appeared as a minus b star c plus d, then the compiler what it is going to do is translate it to the expressions as shown on the right. That is v1 is equal to b star c, v2 is equal to a minus v1, v3 is equal to v2 plus d. This particular format is known as the three address code because a typical ALU can only read two source operands and produce one value. After this is done, then any further such steps of the compiler will take place including register location. So this has been also shown uh, graphically here. The value of d and c are multiplied together and finally assigned to v1. Then it takes in an input from a and another from v1 and there is a subtraction operation which produces a value v2 and which there is a plus operator along with the input from d variable and which produces the value v3. So this kind of graphical representation is what is used internally by the compiler to do various tasks. So what this tells you as a programmer is that typically writing expressions involving more than 3-4 operators should be avoided because it hinders the readability and in any case it is not helping the compiler produce more efficient code. If you don't break up the large expression into smaller parts, the compiler is going to do so. So long expressions are hard to read non-intuitive as well as no impact on performance and hence they should be avoided. 